Hi everyone, Zach here, and welcome to lesson 16 in this series on developing an RTS game in Unreal Engine. In this video, we'll be checking the placement of our buildings, and having buildings stay blue if they're where we can place them and turn red if where they're not. This code will work both for the visual side of it, for the user, the red versus blue, and for functionality, and it won't allow us to place a building when one of the conditions that turns it red is met. This video and this series have been brought to you by Patreon sponsors, and you too can help this channel out, and all you have to do is hit that like button down below. And if you want to take your support a bit further, all you have to do is hit the subscribe and notify bell. And again, if you want to take it even a bit further, all you have to do is become a Patreon sponsor. Patreon sponsors get early access to these videos. All right, open up your projects, and we will make a start. All right, so here we are back inside of the editor, and we have a lot of things to do today. Now, it's very complex in Blueprint. This is one of the times I'm gonna say doing this in C++ is so much easier, but this is a Blueprint tutorial, so we work with what we have. We're gonna start by going to our building manager. In our building manager, let's just close everything for now. We are going, sorry, master, not manager. We are going to, also open up the construction script. So what we're going to do is we're gonna create a bunch of functions. Now at start, some of these functions aren't gonna make much sense. I'll explain them as we go, but we'll see them actually make more sense when we implement them. We're gonna start with get vectors. And this is a pure function that will go into our previews. It will return our actor's location, so where the building is, what direction it's facing, and its right vector. So to do that, we're gonna do get actor location. And then let's get a return node here real quick. And we're gonna plug this return value into there. And this is going to be our actor location. We are then going to do get actor rotation. From the rotation, we are going to get forward vector. Okay, that goes into there. This is our forward vector. And then from the same get rotation, we're gonna do get right vector. And that return goes into there. And that is our right vector. From there, what we need to do is we need to create one more function called get or check is overlapping. This is gonna go into our preview. This also is a pure function. I'm just gonna double check that I did set that to pure, I did. And for this one, what we're going to do is we're gonna get overlapping actors. Now the keyword here is actors. Static mesh actors don't count as actors. So just be mindful of that. We're gonna get the length of this. We are then going to go, is this greater than zero? In other words, is there something actually in here? Remember, because the first element is zero, so it needs to be greater than. So is something actually in here? And we're gonna do a return node. And we're gonna plug that into our return. And we're just gonna say B is overlapping. Okay, next we're gonna have one called slope trace, which is gonna tr uh, trace the slope of the line coming from our vectors. And we're gonna do this above and below our actual building. So we're gonna create one more function called slope trace. And this will be a pure function which will go into preview as well. It's gonna have one input called trace location, which will be of type vector. Whoops, not rotator. And from there, what we're going to do is we're gonna go from the execute pin and we're gonna do a line trace by channel. Our channel type will be landscape. And then we are going to take this and we are going to do an add. And we're gonna to add to it a value of 1000 in the Z. As our start, we are then going to do a vector minus a vector and do it again, a thousand units down, and that will be our end. From our out hit, we will break these results. We will then get our impact point and we want to break that vector, okay? From the Z, what we're going to do is we are going to do a float minus a float, put that into the B pin. And then we're going to do get actor location. We are going to split that structure and then we are gonna plug the Z into the A. And then we will do our return node. And for our return node, we will plug that into there and we'll rename this as our difference. 
So this is the difference between where we've impacted at and where our line is. So we're tracing that distance. That's the slope. Okay, now we actually need to calculate what that slope is. And this is the tricky part that honestly, again, I really prefer doing in C++. Okay, so what we're going to do is create one more function called calculate slope. Now for this, we're going to have an array of differences between what we expect to find, what we have as our threshold of this is a valid placement and what there actually is. So we're going to create a vector of floats called differences. So we're going to create this and it's going to be called differences. It is of type float and it is a vector of them. This will go into our category of preview. And what we're going to do is we're going to get this. We are going to clear it because we don't want there to be anything in here. We're going to plug that into there. All right, then we're going to do a sequence node. Again, you can hold on the S key and then click to get that. We're going to have a total of three pins here. Let's do our first one. And the first one on the then zero is going to be into another sequence. And this needs a total of five pins. All right, this is the bit I really honestly, this is what we're doing on this one, prefer doing it in C++. So we are going to just let's do one of these really quickly. We're going to do our differences. We're going to get it. We are going to add. We're going to plug that into there, not add unique. Do not use add unique for this. Okay, let's put a reroute in, bring this up, line these up, raise that there, and then we're going to raise these even further. All right, we need a bit of room. And all we're going to do here is we're going to calculate out that slope, that difference. So what we do is we get our actor. Sorry, first what we're going to do is put this into our preview category. And then we're going to get our vectors, and we want to know our forward direction plus the extent. So we're going to do add. Okay. Now the extent is the forward vector and the right vector added together. Multiplied, because that's only really half of it, by our extent, which gives us the full range. So if we go to master, uh, under construction, that's where I put it. There it is. We get the extent. I guess extent actually should probably be under preview instead of under construction. I guess I have it in the wrong folder. Our category. We're going to plug that into there. There we go. And now we're going to use this and we're going to do our slope trace. That slope trace then gives us the difference that we're adding there. There we go. That's all this is really doing. Now we're going to do this over and over again. Now what this one really is doing is giving us the center of the building. The rest of them are going to give us the corners of the building. So what this is currently doing is giving us the corner of the building, just one of the corners. We're going to do the other corners as well. So to do that, we're going to copy all of this. We're going to duplicate it down here. We're going to pin this into the then one, and we're going to move this up way up higher because we need a lot of room for this. Put another reroute in here, and I am going to line that reroute up with that and move everything up here. Okay, so also move all this up here. So now what we need to do is change out how we're calculating this slope. And the way we're doing that is for this one, well, we need to change out the bit at the start here. So we're gonna move this to the right. We are going to break the right vector. To do this, we're going to multiply this by a float. So we're gonna do multiply. And you'll notice when we do this, hey, we get the vector thing. And before I said, oh, we can plug things in over, it converts. To convert it now, we're gonna right click it, convert pin, float, single precision. And we're gonna set this to negative one. Really shouldn't actually have gotten rid of the, um, and we're gonna plug this into our add there. There we go. So we're adding in, we're multiplying this by negative one. So we're getting the back corner now of the building. And then we're adding that to our extent and we're doing our check. Okay, well, let's copy all of this down here. And this will go into our then two. We're gonna go back to the front of the building and we are going to go to the other corner of the building. So we're gonna change the right vector. So now we're on the left side and we're gonna plug that into there and that into there. So this is the front one corner. This is the back uh, same corner. This is the front other corner. Okay, let's take all of this and let's duplicate this one more time. This should all seem familiar from the edge scroll with the uh, negative float multiplication in. Put that into the then three. And then this one, what we're going to do is we are going to duplicate this pin. We are going to plug it into there and we're going to plug that into our plus. So now we're getting the back other corner. All right, so that covers our, our corners. We still have one more area to worry about and that is the origin. And this one's really simple. We're just going to take this get actors and this add differences here and the slope trace. All right, so for this, we're gonna go from the actor location into our slope trace and from our slope trace into our add unique. 
and that is our origin taken care of. All right, I'm gonna move just move, keep moving those up a bit. There we go. And I'm just gonna move these two by themselves up a bit more. That way I can line that up there. Okay, so this is our origin taken care of. And that is the majority of what we have to do done. It only took about 10 minutes. Next, we need to determine the height, the mesh height based off the landscape. So this is our then one off of this bit here. And I'm actually gonna take all these nodes again, and I'm just gonna keep moving them up a bit. There we go. So for this, what we want to do is we want to see what our differences are. So we're gonna get our differences. We want to get the min and max. So we're gonna do min float. And then we're gonna do also max float. And we wanna know, are these greater than negative one? Or are these indexes valid? So how, do we have anything in here? So we wanna do, is this greater than negative one? We could do, is it greater than and equal to zero if you prefer? And if both of these are true, there should be something in here and these arrays should have some value, but the first time we do it, it won't. So actually no, the first time we, will, we should do it, it will because we'll have done it up here, but this is just a safety check regardless. We're gonna do a branch there. So are we looking at a valid area? Actually, it might not be. Our mouse might not be somewhere valid. And what we're gonna do from this is we are going to do a box trace. So we're gonna do box trace by channel. Now I will say this part is easier to do in Blueprint than it was in C++. Yeah, box trace in C++ was a very fun experience. I am being sarcastic. We are gonna get vectors, we are gonna get the actual location, and we are going to do add, and we're gonna add 1000, and that will be our start. We will then do actor location, subtract, and we'll subtract a thousand again. And that will be our end. For our half Z, we're not gonna worry about that. For our half size, we're going to split that structure. We're not gonna worry about the Z, we're only gonna care about the X and the Y. We are gonna get our extent. We are going to split that structure or break it, whichever you prefer. And the extent X will go into the half x and the extent y into the half y there. We'll leave the z and z and the rotations alone. Everything else will remain the same except for this will become landscape. All right, from there, what we're going to do is we are going to do our first branch on a return value there. Make sure we actually hit something. If we did, we're then going to break the hit results. We are going to go down to here and we're going to look for our impact normal. We are going to split our impact normal. Actually, what we're going to do for impact normals, we're going to break this one. So from there, what we're gonna do is off this branch, we're gonna do set actor location. And we are going to split that pin there. So our loca new location from here, from here, we're gonna plug the Z into there. And then we're going to get vectors. And we're going to take the actor location, we're gonna split that structure. And the X goes into X and the Y goes into Y. Okay, that takes us through this bit of it. And then for the final bit, our then two is going to be our return. So we are going to get the absolutes of these and these being our min and max float. We are going to check, are these above our tolerance limit? So we're going to do greater than, we're going to duplicate that node down here. And from this, we're going to do a promote variable and this will be max difference allowance. Now you could do this as a local. I did it in my original file as a local, but you know I'm just gonna put this into our preview category, not do it as a local. And we're gonna start with a difference. Oh. Now, if you don't like this distance, if you wanna have, or this difference, if you wanna have a different tolerance, you can. It's up to you, but we'll start with 20, see what works for you. If either of these are true, so we need an or statement, we cannot place the building at that location. So if this is true, then we are on a slope. And so we are going to promote this to a variable called B is on slope. Okay. And this will go into our category of preview. And we plug the then two into there, put a reroute in, drag that reroute down there, line that up. And then we do our return node finally. And then we return this information. And then we're gonna call this as location or B location is bad. All right, let's compile. And now what we're gonna do before we call all this up, just so we can see that, hey, this is actually working. We're gonna set our materials for when we overlap. So we are gonna do a, another event called, or function called set material overlap. This will go into our category of preview. And we're gonna do here is a branch. 
and this be on a slope thing should be a private variable. So we'll mark it as private and we'll use getters and setters for it. All right, so what we'll do is we will first get our check is overlapping. We'll do an or, cause if it is overlapping or it's on a slope, then it's not good. Plug that into there. And then our calculate slope, we'll grab. And this also should have been a pure function. So let's convert this over to a pure function and plug that into there. There we go. So if either of those are true, then we are in a bad location and we need to set our material to be red. So we might have more than one material. So we're going to do a for loop. And what we'll do here is we will get our material list. We will do the length of it. We will take one away from that length. Okay. That will be our last index. There we go. We can put that there for now. Let's put a reroute in because we have other things that will be coming off of this. And then what we'll do is we will do a get at that index that we're currently looking at. There we go. And then from our get, we are going to set vector parameter value. Now, in case I messed something up, what I'm going to do is go over to my materials, go to my buildings, open up the original, go here, copy that and paste it into here. I know it's color, but I'm going to be paranoid. I use the wrong spelling. There's a space, what have you. For our value here, I am going to set this to one in the red and zero and everything else. Actually, I'm going to change that slightly. This will be 0.75. All right. Next, what I'm going to do, and I'm going to leave, go back here actually and open up this again because I do want it for something else, is I'm going to take all of this and I am going to do a next I'm going to do something else first. First, I'm going to do a branch down here. And I'm going to do the same check again, but instead of or, I am going to do an and so that both of these must be false. And we're going to work off the false branch. So to do that, I'm going to then take all of this and I'm going to duplicate that down here, plug it into the false branch and line it back up. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go over to my color and I'm just going to drag this up there. There we go. I'm going to go back to my color here and I'm going to select the color that's been dragged up there. All right. And I'm going to just hit OK there and I'm going to compile and let that do its thing. And then I'm going to find my move preview and I'm going to do set material overlap. There we go. All right. Well, that should take us through what we need to do. Let's test this out. Let's hit play. Let's hit B. There's our building. Let's find the crater. Oh, hey, we're red. And we're back to blue. Let's find the mountain. We're already red. We're back off the mountain and we're blue. Let's rotate it. Find here again. Let's rotate it further. See if that causes anything to happen. Let's rotate it away from the edge. There we go. So we see the rotations can affect if it is allowed or not. We're not allowed there because we're on a slope slightly. We can't see it, but the upper right corner from our perspective, which is actually the back right corner, because this is the front down here is on that slope. But if we rotate back, we're not on the slope anymore. Okay, so that takes us through what we need to do in this video. If you've enjoyed setting up your building preview to see, hey, can I place it here? I'm getting it to rotate, then make sure to hit that like button down below. It really does help this channel out. In the next video, we'll be setting up our placing a building for construction and working through how construction works. And if you want to be here for that, make sure to hit the subscribe and notify bell so you know when those videos are out. And if you want to take your support a bit further, consider becoming a Patreon sponsor. Patreon sponsors at upper tiers get instant access to all ongoing and completed projects from this YouTube channel and at other tiers get access once projects are completed and also get access to these videos early. Okay, that said, I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial and I hope that you have a wonderful day.